If you think that creating a camera transition system to make your game more cinematic is hard, then you're wrong. I'm gonna show you on this video how to create seamless camera transition in Unity. Camera transitions are not just about visuals, they play a huge role to create immersion into your game world. Whether you need to highlight an object of your world when the player interacts with it, creating varieties of gameplay, or even just show the world you created from another perspective, it's important to be able to switch from a camera to another. So here we are in Unity 2022 with a very basic setup as you can see, I just imported the starter asset from the Unity asset store. Thanks to that, I have a third person controller working. I can easily walk, run, jump, and I modified also a bit these assets to be able to crouch. For the purpose of getting a camera transition system working, I will start by creating a third person camera. To do that, go under Game Object, Cinemachine, and virtual camera. Let's collect camera follow player. Inside the player armature, we have a player camera route, which is a simple empty game object. We're gonna use it as a target for our camera follow player. So let's drag and drop it under the follow target. And voila. So that's great, but we can do better actually. Select your camera. Under aim, select do nothing because we don't need it and for the noise select basic multi-channel purlin and as a noise profile i will select this one it will give a more natural camera as you can see it's shaking a little bit like if someone was handling the camera so that's a bit better now let's set up our scene with multiple cameras for our first example, I will create a zone and when the player enters in this zone, the camera will automatically transition to another one. To do so, go on game object, create empty, let's call it zone, alright. Now let's add a box collider and set it to is trigger. Position it wherever you want and edit the collider. I will add a few objects to see where the zone is when we play the game. Okay, perfect. Another thing you can do is add an icon to this zone by clicking here and add this one for example. Obviously the next step is to add another camera. So go under Game Object, Cinemachine and Virtual Camera. Let's call it Zone Camera. I will put it under the Zone Game Object to keep it organized. In our case I would like to set up a top-down view so I will put my camera on top like this and I will make sure that it is looking at my player so I will drag and drop the player armature all right if you would like to preview what it's gonna look like you can open the game view so that's not bad I like it like that currently we have two cameras so our goal will be to transition from this one to this one when the player enter in this zone okay so for that let's create a script we're gonna call it camera zone switch and let's open it before we jump into it it's important to understand how cinemachine works with transition you have two ways in order to get a transition from a camera to another the first one is to use the priority property from a camera once the priority from a camera become higher than the other, Cinemachine will automatically transition from the first one to the second one. It can be very useful in a situation where you will update the priority of the camera based on the player distance, for example. The other way to do it is to simply enable or disable a camera because Cinemachine automatically transition from one to another when it detects a new camera enabled. 
and that's what we're gonna use for the following script. In our script, we don't need the start and update method, so you can safely delete them. We don't need the two using at the top, so you can safely delete them, okay? Now, what we need is obviously a reference to our camera, so this is, it's gonna be the camera that we will enable when the player enter in the zone. At this point, you could get an error, so don't forget to add using Cinemachine at the top, okay? Next step is to add the activator. So it's basically the game object that will enable the transition to another camera. In our case, it will be our player, but who knows, you can have different kind of scenarios. Now let's add an awake method. This method will be called before the game starts. This allows us to disable the camera to transition because we don't want to have thousands of camera enabled at the same time. We only want the third person camera to be enabled and the other ones to be disabled. So at the beginning, we make sure that every other camera is disabled. Now we're gonna use the untrigger enter method. This method will be called once the player enter in the zone. So what we're gonna do uh, is check that the collider that entered in the zone is the player. So to make it more generic, we're gonna say the activator. So if the player that entered in the zone is our player, we're gonna enable the camera, okay? That's simple. And thanks to that, CD Machine will automatically transition to the other one. But don't forget to add the untrigger exit method that is called whenever the player will exit the zone. So in our case, if we see that the object that exit the zone is our player, we're gonna disable our camera to make sure that we go back to the right one, okay? Let's save and go back into our editor. Back in Unity, select the zone and you should have this script. So for the activator, we're gonna drag and drop the player armature. And for the camera to activate, we're gonna select our virtual camera, okay? Now let's try it. So here I have my main camera. If I enter in the zone, the other one takes, takes the lead. And if I exit, it goes back to my main camera. And that's basically all you need to create an infinite amount of automatic transition. However, automatic transition are not the only one kind of transition that you would like. Sometimes you would like to change the camera, for example, when the player interact with an object. So let's try to push this tutorial a bit further and see how you can create a similar script in order to get a camera transition when you press a button. And by the way, we are currently 74 on this channel currently. That will be awesome if we could reach 100 after this video. So please consider subscribing. We're back in our scene that I modified a bit. First, I added the Canva with a simple image that will say look when it's available. Next, I added a simple object. I called it strange artifact. It's composed by a simple cylinder, a cube with an animation, and a camera. When we look at our game, this is what it looks like. Our goal is to transition from this camera to this one when the player interacts with this object. It will be done in two steps. First, we must show this tiny icon when the player is near the object. Then, if the player is near the object and press the button, we must transition from the first camera to the second one, okay? To do so, I added a sphere collider to our object, and just like before, I checked the East trigger property. Thanks to that, we ensure that our player won't collide with our sphere collider. To do what we said, we will create a script. I'll call it camera button switch. In the script, I already deleted the start and update method. We'll add them progressively later when we need them. First, when the game starts, 
we must disable the icon telling us that we can interact with an object by default. So let's add a list of objects that we will enable or disable based on our need. At the beginning of the game, so in the start method, we will iterate over every game object that we need to enable when the player is near and disable it by default. When an object enters in the area of the sphere collider, we must check that it is the player and set to true the state of every game object that we have set in the list. So for that, I will call a method check collider and toggle that we will define later. And of course, if the object exit the area, we must do the opposite and set to false every object that we enabled before. So if you are wondering what is the check collider and toggle method, it is something that does not exist yet, but we will create it right now. We check that the collider is the player. If that's the case, we iterate over every game object that we defined and we will set active based on the is active parameter that we defined here. So it will be either true when we enter in the area or false when we exit the area. Thanks to that, when the player enter in the area, we will check that it is the player and call the set active method with the true parameter. If we exit the area, we will call the check collider method using false. And in this case, if that's the player, we will call the set active method using false as a parameter. Let's check if it's working correctly. So in the list of objects to enable, I will put the action icon here. And if I hit play, when I enter in the zone, I can see that the icon is here. And if I exit, it disappears. And this is exactly what we want. Back into our script, we now need to disable or enable the camera if the player press a button. Be careful for this part. It will highly depends on how you've configured your player controller. In my case, I am using the starter asset from the Unity Asset Store. You will probably need to adapt the script based on how you decided to set up your controller. However, the logic and the idea behind remain the same. Back into our script, we'll need two things. First, the using Cinemachine. And in my case, I will also had using Starter Asset, but that's because I'm using the Starter Asset from the Unity Asset Store. Then, just like before, we need a reference to our Cinemachine camera. And now, we'll also need a few things. First, we'll need a reference to the Cinemachine brain. So the Cinemachine brain is the component that is managing every Cinemachine virtual camera. To put it simply, you have one Cinemachine brain in your scene and multiple Cinemachine virtual cameras. And the Cinemachine brain will handle every transition between each Cinemachine virtual camera. Then we'll need a boolean that will tell us if the player is inside or not the area. And in my case, I will need a reference to a third person controller. To initialize the Cinemachine brain and the third person controller, I will go in the start method and I will use the find game object with tag and get the component uh, based on what I need. So in my case, I will use the tag main camera to search the main camera in my scene and then get the component Cinemachine brain attached to my camera. Same for the player controller. I will find the player game object and once I find it, I will get the component third person controller. Note once again that this part highly depends on what you use. Just like before, when the game starts, we need to disable the Cinemachine camera to make sure that we don't have multiple cameras enabled at the beginning. To set the is player inside boolean, we'll just go in the check collider and toggle method we defined before and just use the is active parameter here. Now, what we'll do is very simple. We'll add an update method. 
and we'll do a very basic check. If the player is inside the area and our controller press the action button and that cine machine is not currently blending uh, which means making a transition from a camera to another we'll simply enable the camera to activate and it can be enabled or disabled automatically by using the game object dot active self and we will just add an exclamation mark thanks to that we will simply create some kind of toggle that we can enable or disable okay so that that is a very useful technique that finally one last thing you must do is that when we exit the area we must not forget to disable the camera whatever we do and to make it clear the player controller dot action is simply a property that tells me if the player press the action button during this frame so whatever you have done in your player controller you must have a way to retrieve this value now let's try it out i will select the object drag and drop the camera to activate and now i will click play in the game if i enter in the zone i have the icon that appear and now if i press e the camera switch to another view and of course if i press e once again it comes back to my third person camera in my case i decided to do not block our player movement when we are looking to something so obviously i can still move so that depends on what kind of behavior you would like to your game so if i decide to leave the area the camera also comes back to its initial state now you have all the keys needed to create your own camera transitions feel free to modify or improve the scripts as you need for example you could add a text box when the player interact with an object or even for example an animation it's up to you to decide what you would like to do now that you have all these techniques i hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time